day everyone and welcome once again to our industrial electronic session. I'm C. Tobejane and in today's session we'll be looking at industrial electronics and five under the topic of RC and RL circuits. In today's session we'll be focusing on example 1.3 of the TVET first textbook by Tropent and Macmillan publishers. In that topic We'll be looking at RC integrator circuits. As you have learned in this topic that the integrator circuit and the RL circuits are the type of circuitry which is used in electronic circuit to try and modify signal operation. In today's session, we'll just be doing some calculations in the RC integrator circuit. And as we continue with many more sessions, we'll also look at the RL differentiator. Now, what is it that is expected from us here? In example 1.3, the examiner wants us to calculate by making use of the circuit provided in figure 1.17, the RC integrator. The first thing that we need to calculate there is the time constant. We need to calculate the output voltage for one time constant, the time it takes to finish charging, and we must also draw the response wave diagram. Now, let us get to it. We know that to calculate the time constant, we'll use the equation R times C, where R is given as 120 kilo ohms, while C is given as 2 nanofarads. Also take note in the circuit that we are given an input step voltage of 12 volts positive. Now this is a square wave supplied type of a signal. I want to believe that you already understand why we choose to use a square wave instead of a sine wave or a sawtooth. Also take into consideration that in most cases, our capacitors is sometimes given to us in microfarads most of the cases actually but in today's session it is given in nanofarads it is advisable that at all times you check the units of each component provided to you in order for you to resume with your calculations now here this is going to be 120 exponent positive 3 because it's in kilo and this is going to be 2 exponent negative 9 Please revisit your conversion table that we did in N4 Industrial Electronics. It will carefully assist you on how to convert positive exponential numbers and negative exponential numbers. Remember folks, always ensure that your calculator is handy. The first thing that you need to do before start using it is to reset all the values so that it can give you accurate answers. Now, our time constant will be given by 240 microseconds. That is the value of the time constant. Number two, we need to calculate the output voltage at one time constant. What does this mean now? If you can look at the charging time of a capacitor, it is learned that the capacitor will reach 63.2% of its final steady value at one time constant. But it will reach 99% of its final steady value at five time constant. What does it mean now? It means that during the charging of the capacitor, if in this case we are supplying 12 volts, the charging period of the capacitor to reach that final point at one time constant here it will be reaching 63.2 percent of the 12 percent that is provided now if we check what is 12 percent or rather what is 63.2 percent of the 12 volts that is supplied to that circuit we will then find the output voltage at one time constant in this case, our one-time constant will be equal to 240 micro 
seconds. That is one time constant. Now, let us try and do this in two ways. The first method that we are going to use is we will use the equation to calculate the output voltage, which will be V plus or zero plus. The VO plus, it's the output voltage, maximum output voltage going to the positive for the first time from zero. But you can just simply use Vmax. E to the power negative T over time constant. Now, this would be 12 because going to the positive for the first time from zero, it goes to a maximum of 12. Allow me to use a square wave here, not a square wave, a square bracket, to the power negative. For the first time, for the first time, it means that our T will be equal to one multiplied by time constant. And one multiplied by time constant, we know that it will be one multiplied by 240, microseconds so that will be 204 however i will simply substitute everything as is micro that is exponent negative 6 240 micro exponent negative 6 now let us find out what the answer there is that is 12 1 minus e to the power negative 1 time constant exponent negative 6 divided by 240, exponent negative 6, and the answer is 7.585. That is 7.585 volts. The 7.585 volts is equal to 63.2% of the 12 volt supplied. Right? Now, let us see if we use another method by using the theory of 63.2 or right now we need to find out how what is x when we have a value of 12 volts supplied multiplied by 100 percent right this one should give us 63.2 percent this should give us 63.2 percent now we need to solve for the value of x right when you want to solve for the value of x x you would do your math x volts would be given by 63.2 multiplied by 12 divided by 100 that should give us the value of x so let us see 63.2 multiplied by 12 divided by 100 what is that 7.584 which is equated to that one 7.584 for fault. You see, the only difference is very small, but it all depends on you know your 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 your, your when you when when you when you um equate it to the nearest decimal or your decimal places. But basically, that should prove to us that at one time constant, the capacitor would have charged 63.2%. And at five time constant, which is the value just right here the capacitor would have charged 99.9% or 99.7%. Usually it's 99.7%. Anything above five would just get you closer and closer and closer and closer to the 12 volts. But one thing that we know for sure is that the capacitor cannot have a voltage a voltage charge exactly equated to the one that is supplied it will always have 99.7 up it gets closer and closer just like that right so we don't have a problem with this it's just showing you a method which one may choose to utilize now the Third question, they say they want us to calculate the time it takes to finish charging. What is the time it took to finish charging? I said that the time it will take to finish charging would be equal to five time constant. 
it's written in your book, if you go closely and read step by step, it will tell you that the capacitor should have reached 99.7% at exactly five time constant. That is finished charging, right? Anything above that is just a small change, a small change. It will go to 99.7%, 99.8%, 99.9%, 99.9%, probably up to 100%. I'm sure by then you would have been at 100 time constant, something of that nature. Right, but we are focusing at five time constant because at that value we are very close to one hundred percent. Right, so the time it will take charging would be equal to five time constant. This will be equal to five times two hundred and forty exponent negative six. You punch that in your calculator. Five times two hundred and forty exponent negative six. This should give you. 1600 microseconds that is 1000 not 1600 that's 1200 pardon me microseconds the capacitor will be fully charged at 1200 microseconds right it will reach 63.2 percent at 240 microseconds and it will fully charged right here at 1200 microseconds right and the last question says draw the response wave form in the response wave form we may choose to charge it up to 63.2 percent and then discharge it the period of discharge or we may choose to charge it all the way up to 1000 so it can be divided into two the examiner will not penalize you for that now let us look at that let us look at that now this is number four right so let's see here let's see we have 12 volts here and around here uh, we have the 7, let me put the 7.585 volts there, right, 5 volts there, and then let's see here, 200, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, so this is 200, 4, 6, 8, 10 12 14 this would be our time in microseconds this would be our voltage in volts just like that just like that now at exactly this point let us use a gray color here at exactly this point where our time constant is 240 volts, 240 seconds, at that point where we have our capacitor reaching 63.2%. Do you see that? 63.2% and it can also discharge at that point down to there so we may name this part our charging we may name that part our this charging right this is one way of doing it the other way of doing it is to pay attention to our maximum voltage there our maximum voltage there we may draw it like so right and you see that at exactly this point at 1200 it's where we have our five time constant this is our full charge that is our full charge now you may choose to draw this or that that will still be accurate now one thing that we have covered that is that stands out the most here is to understand the time constant of this right you may also find circuits where they ask you to calculate the time taken for the capacitor to reach 5 volts 
of the supplied voltage. In this case, maybe our supplied voltage is 12 volts. And you may need to use this equation. And by making use of your mathematical knowledge of manipulation of technical formulas, it will then be simple. But at the same time, I want to believe that that should be part of our next session where we unpack such a complex question. However, do not forget that your capacitor will reach 99.7% of its final value up to 100% of its final value or at five time constant. We consider that a full charge and it will reach 63.2% at exactly one time constant that's it for me today folks let's hope to meet again when we unpack more questions on rc and rl circuits